Welcome to Electra Online. Well, we're now ready to solve for the two currents of the two loops once we have found the KVLs or the, loop, the voltage rising and drops around each of the two loops in the previous video. So to facilitate this, we've made some more room and then we, writ we have written it in the matrix format. So those two equations now need to be solved simultaneously and that's what the matrix format looks like. But we're going to use the method of determinants. So first what we find is we find the determinant of this right here. So let's write it like that. We get four minus J2, J2 over here and we have a minus two minus J2 for that element. So now we first multiply these two together. So we end up with minus eight and minus J8 minus the product of these two. So notice a minus times a minus becomes plus, but a J times a J becomes a negative. So that's negative times four or negative four. And so this becomes equal to minus 12 minus J8 or minus 12 plus J8 like this when we pull out the negative sign. So let's uh, calculate that. So we end up at uh, 144 plus 64, take the square root, that will give me equal to minus 14.422 with a phase angle of 8 divided by 12, take the inverse tangent of that, which is 33.690 degrees, 33.690 degrees, and that's a 3 there, Let me, there we go. All right, so now we need to find D1, which is equal to, now we're going to replace the first column by 100 and 0, and the second column will remain, that's minus J2, and minus 2 minus J2. All right, so when we multiply, we get minus 200 minus J200, and when we cross multiply that, we get zero, so that's what we get. We can pull out a 200, so this is equal to uh, a negative sign, so we have 200 plus J200, and let's see here, we have 200 squared, times 2, take the square root, so we end up with, this is equal to negative 282.843 with a phase angle of 45 degrees. Of course, we can't forget the negative sign there. All right, now we find D2, so we get the first column back, which is 4 and J2. And the second column up becomes 100 and 0. Notice when I multiply those two, I get 0. I get minus J200, uh, which is equal to 200 with a phase angle of minus 90 degrees. And now I'm ready to find the currents because I1 is equal to the ratio of D1 over D. D1 is 282 two or minus 282.843 with a phase angle of 45 degrees divide by d which is 14 point oh a negative negative 14.422 with a phase angle of 33.690 degrees all right so this is equal to 282 divided by 14.422 and we get 19.612 that would be 19.612 with a phase angle of 45 minus 33.69 so we get 11.31 degrees all right now for current 2 i2 this gives me D2 divided by D, which is equal to, D2 is a 200 with a phase angle of minus 90 degrees, divided by D, which is a minus 14.422 with a phase angle of 33.690 degrees. Now notice I can bring this negative up here and apply it to that, so add 180 degrees. So this can be written as a 200 
with a phase angle of a positive 90 degrees divided by a positive 14.422 with a phase angle of 33.69 degrees. All right, so what I've done is I take the, took the negative, brought it up here, then applied it to the minus 90, turned it into plus 90 by adding 180 degrees, get rid of the negative sign, and now I'm ready to take 200 divided by 14.422, which gives me a current of 13.868 with a phase angle of 90 minus 33.69. That gives me 56.31 degrees, and that's I2. So there's I2, and there is I1. So now, of course, if you want to write that again into the time domain, you can now write that I1 as a function of time is equal to 19.612 times the cosine of 2t plus 11.31 degrees. And I2, as a function of time, can be written as 13.868 times the cosine of 2t plus 56.31 degrees. And that is how we find the current of those two loops in the next video, we're going to find how to, how to calculate the energy stored in the system at a particular moment in time. But that is how it's done.